Yo, what's good? Welcome to another episode of the Amigo Experiment. Just so handy, flow. So the guy with DMV. Y esta tarde, check it out, man. She's an actress, producer. She's young. She's beautiful. She's on the sh hit show series on Netflix right now called Sneakerheads, and she's been on other things like Blacklist and everything like that too. Yo, con nosotros tenemos la bella, beautiful Puerto Rican. Con nosotros. Jernal Escorchado. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Un placer. Hey guys, how are you? We're good. How about you? Okay. How are you doing with this whole pandemic craziness? I'm good. I'm a very optimistic person, so I adapt. I'm like, this is the end of the world. We treat it like it. If we, you know, I'm like, I'm ready with my bag. Like, I feel like, you know, I'm, I, I'm very optimistic. I know that it's it's a really difficult situation that we're all all in, but I've tried to see the good and the positive aspects of it. So I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm for like fortunately, um, it hasn't affected anyone near me, and I'm healthy, and everyone around me is healthy. That's good. That's good. Let, let, let's yeah. keep it that way. Let's, yeah, let's... yeah. <laughs> Declaring it, you know, the universe so, is protecting us. You know, <laughs> it, is, it is the universe, the spirits, whatever it is, are coming down higher power. They're all yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, guy, you actually yes. mentioned the earlier before I pressed record and started this whole interview. He said something about your name. It's being unique, very unique. Who did you get named after? So my mom decided to use my dad's name, es Ernesto, y my mom's, uh, do you call it middle name? Like el, nom el segundo nombre. Sí. Eh, que es Jeanette. And so she was like Jeanette y Ernesto. And then she used both of them. Y hizo la mezcla de Jeanette. It's very, it's very unique, though, to be honest. I, I, I never heard it in the first one. I, I've heard it on, but Thank I like you. Thank you. You know, I lately, I was like, I'm really happy for it because she basically gave me my artistic name and, yeah. and, and in a way, you know, it's weird. I think I had this realization later on that I was like, oh, probably the reason why I have this big personality is because my name was like such a name <laughs> that whenever like my teachers would be like, J -j -j -j, I was like, yeah, Jernasa Corchado, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> But, but let's admit it, as a kid, you probably hated it. You were like, it, it was like that, that cross that you had to carry. Like. You know what? I don't know anymore. Like, I feel like at some point I just owned it. Mm. And, um, and I think, you know, yeah, I, 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 you know, people would, you know, people try to bully me at some point and call me like, oh, it's your nest, like your nest. <laughs> wow. Man, but kids, I, kids are mean. Kids are kids mean. Kids are the worst. But honestly, like for me, I don't know. It made me stand out in a way. It wasn't like Gabriela or Maria, which I really liked. You know, the fact that like I wasn't. You know, so you know, I I saw the positive of it, and I I really now I'm like I'm good, and I like it. Uh, you, you you grow to embrace it. So. Yeah, yeah. It was the only thing I knew. You know, like when you're giving a name, I don't think that you ask. You don't question it you know you're just like this is me and you go with it right yeah, yeah pretty much yeah like my my name is henry yes i, I thought i was so boring just you know what i mean but you know what <laughs> my name does sound a lot better than jose i'm gonna tell you that right now you know because jose is so common all the time but and you, and you know why he's saying that because that's actually my first I, I go by david that's what everybody knows me as <laughs> so my first name is jose it's jose david but I don't, I don't go by, and the reason, the reason I, I go by David is because ever since kindergarten in school, mm -hmm. there was a, like two or three other Jose's in my class, and every grade, every class, every grade. So in order to be different, you know, to separate from the other Jose's, I'd be like, I'm gonna just go by my middle name, which is David. You have to. You so, have to. Because I, I can't be like Jose number one, number two. <laughs> No, I would just want to be different. Like, I can't be with the rest. Jeunesse, have you ever had a moment that, that you've grown up with somebody, maybe a friend or family member, y tú le llamas un cierto nombre all your life, and then when you hear their actual name, you're like, who's that? Who's that? Who? Yes, yes. I feel like a lot of people in my family, like, I think I, I have um, un, eh, no es como, es eh, un tío abuelo, y le decimos caco. 
pero yo creo, mira, bendito, me da pena porque I feel like I don't even know the name. Dale. Es como Eugenio, no, no es Eugenio, es como <risa> Eu... Es un nombre bien raro, Eugenio. pero todo, toda la vida. No, no es ni Eugenio, es como... Sí, like, I don't even know. Like, es un nombre súper raro. De esos de antes, de los viejos que antes usaban como que... Como mi abuela, mi, mi abuela, ella le, le decía Min, y yo creo que su nombre era como... Sí, wow. Wow, I'm having like such a... Like, sí, that's like, siempre pasa, siempre pasa. Como que, y especialmente en la familia. Este, y los latinos, siempre tenemos como que llamamos mucho a la gente por otros nombres. Embedded in our culture, like nicknames are embedded in the culture. I know. Like, cannot, Now I like, feel bad. I have to call my grandpa and be like, okay, wait, <laughs> tell me the names of these people. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how exactly how I felt, you know, the day that I heard this guy's name announced in front of me. I'm doing paperwork, I'm, I'm doing some stuff, and I'm, Jose, who, who, who's that? It's me. <laughs> What? I feel lied to, dog. Like, you know, and we work together. This guy's pay stuff says Jose, something like, bro. <laughs> didn't tell me. He's like, why don't I tell you what? Your name is really Jose. He's just like, whoa, I thought you knew. I'm like, no, I've been calling you David for over like a decade, bro. Like, like a long time. You know? You've been lying about your identity. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, you got papers? Are you okay? Like, I'm <laughs> actually. It happens. It happens. Oh, man, I'm going to have to find it. Now I feel like I, I'm going to have to call you guys and be like, this is the name. <laughs> and you know, that, that, that's going to be your homework for the holidays. When you, you know, for Christmas, when you go with the family. Hey, what's your real name? It's not right. What's, that. I know. <laughs> Siempre pasa. como Tito, eh, Tatito. Like, I have an uncle that's Tatito. But, oh, es Jose. Se llama Jose. Oh, well, there you go. See? But I didn't know. Y se llama, <laughs> y le decían Tato, I think, Tatito. I think that's like the most commonest name, Jose. Yeah, you have to. When, you're, when your parents don't have originality, then you have, like, it's up to you to find it, you know? Well, you know, it's fun. I asked him, I was like, why did you guys name me Jose David? It was like, era no nombre biblico. I was like, wow. I, I, we we need a new story in the Bible then with, like, yeah. new names or something. Yeah. Eugenio, Rutilio en that train, you know what I mean? Enrico Berto. <laughs> Somebody like that. <laughs> so you know, yeah. I've noticed I've noticed things about you. Like you, first off, congratulations on your acting career. You have a hell of a resume. Let me tell Thank you, you. I'm looking Thank at you. that, you've been on a big like shows like NBC, like Blacklist. You've been, you know, Little America that came on Apple Apple TV as well. It's like you have so much under your belt. Sneakerheads right now as well. I've noticed that you play these roles. Like you're like really badass. Like dead ass. You're like freaking assassin in one like you're you like play these badass roles even on sneakerheads you're 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 the person you're playing your character nori like she's like a little badass stevie kicks like you know she's badass like she's known in the sneaker game and like and like you own these characters are you like that are you like a sneakerhead are you like what are you are you like this badass assassin type of chick what are, how are you in real life I don't know. You should like be careful, you know, like we don't know. No, um, I, I, do, I, I feel like in, in life, like I'm very bubbly, as you can tell, like I'm very like jokester. I love to like keep it chill, but I definitely have this side of me. And I don't know if it's the Puerto Rican side of me where it's very, you know, like I'm cool, you know, I'm, I'm one of the boys too. And so I've always had this weird, like, I, I never felt like I could fit in because I could be very feminine sometimes. And sometimes I was like, I want to be with the boys. Like, I want to play fucking, like, with wheels. And, like, I want to do what the boys are doing. Uh, and right. so, and I think that's what, like, that's what you see now. Like, even Little America, she's kind of like a tomboyish kind of girl. Um, with Nori, and, and this is something that I was, like, kind of, like, It's, it's nice that they got me in a way, not saying like I'm the best because it's not like that, but I think it's, I'm, I'm grateful that they picked someone that is comfortable with being with boys because that role in particular, like you need it. I need it to be comfortable with the guys on set, you know, and as a woman, if you are not, I think that's a big part of who Nori is. Nori is, she's comfortable with the guys. And I, I feel like I'm very comfortable with the guys. I feel like sometimes I'm like one of the guys. And, and so that's what you see sometimes. You see that side of like that masculine side that I have as well. 
Um, about sneakerheads, I was not a sneakerhead. Mm. I was not at all. I did not understand why people were so obsessed with sneakers before the show. And once I got the role, I was like, oh, oh, this is awesome. Like these shoes, like these sneakers are dope. And, and I started admiring it. I really like, I really dig it now. I, I, um, I want to have my own collection at some point, you know? So I really like it. Anyway, I, I hope that I didn't go, like, I feel like I did a whole narration. No, no, <laughs> no. Nah, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, when I started watching it, like it kind of, I felt like the main character, to be honest, because I worked, I worked at Foot Locker for a very long time, since I was like 15. And I used to have every shoe that would come out just because it was so accessible. But then when I stepped away from the company, I continue it for after years, but then, you know, you kind of just grow up and then you kind of leave it away. But then the the sneaker culture, especially here in the DMV area, that's where we're based from, you know, Washington, mm -hmm. DC, Maryland, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Like the sneaker culture here has always been big. Like, you know, phone posits, Air Force Ones, the New Balance. Like New Balance, like people think outside of this area, it's not as big, but when you come here, you be like, why you rocking move balance? See that? Yeah. <laughs> now I admire it. Dude. Like it's a crazy culture. Yeah. It's a crazy culture, and I didn't understand, honestly. Like even when I was doing it, because I got the role like two days before I had to be on set. Yeah. So I didn't get to. I was like, oh, so now I have to become a sneakerhead in two days. Okay. And I got to see at least they had a documentary on Netflix, so I got to watch that. Mm -hmm. and really understand it but even when I was shooting I remember feeling I was like this is totally fiction you know like yeah. this is not that crazy like there's no way but it is it is that crazy like no, you do lines people have killed for shoes you know no, no you know and it yeah know. it's trust me we know like me there was there was a time when I worked at for locker I was actually still in high school at the time and it's sad to say, but I remember I had sold a pair of sneakers. There was some phone pauses that had came out at the time. And it was two, two twin brothers. One of the twins had come and bought the pair that had just came out that weekend. And he came, I remember I sold them that weekend. And like, I think it was a Monday or Tuesday, his brother had got murdered over the weekend for the same pair of sneakers. And he had to come return his pair, you know, just to have some money to provide for his funeral costs, you know? Like, so, you know, that's just some of the stories. It's crazy, yeah. Like, Even sad. you telling me this, it's like, yeah, how, pe how petty yeah. can a person be, you know? How yeah, petty. Yeah. But like, um, yeah, just But it's work. crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy how crazy. people, it, it's crazy how, it's a culture. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a culture. It's it's more than fashion. Yeah, it's a it's a lifestyle. Like some people like would rather have and like you get to that mentality where like you be like, hey, I got more money on my feet than my whole outfit. Like that's how mm -hmm. people you know think. Like, but it's it's dope that that you're in this film. It's a comedy, and you know you're putting like the Latino face out there. Cause you know, we're part of that culture. Yeah, like, yeah right. absolutely. We're you know, I, I really, I really love that I, I was able to, you know, and that they picked me cause that's not, you know, as a, and as an actress, it's, it's always kind of like a lottery. You never yeah. know what you're going to get. So, um, and especially because it's not something that you have a decision over. It's someone else that has to approve you. And so for me to get this role, it was like, now looking back, I'm like, wow, like I'm so grateful that I was able to do this as a woman and as a Latina. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I hope that you know that, that we get to do it again and that we get to explore even more the Latino culture because you know what we showed was very little to what yeah. it could really be. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I okay. appreciate you that for that because like even you know we were just looking into the whole the whole casting to sneakerheads. Yeah. It's yeah. very diverse in culture. You have Asian American, you have, uh, you know, Latino American, 
African American, uh, you know, even though Alan Maldonado he plays a black, you know, African American, uh, he's actually Puerto Rican and African American. So, yeah. you know, it's just like to see you guys on the, on the you know on the screen means a lot. Um, and speaking about that, you know, what's your opinion on other Netflix series like that? What out right now, like Hentified is you know full Latino cast almost, mm -hmm. you know, like ninety seven. Yeah. Right? yeah. And as well to Selena, like, how do you feel about these movements going on with Netflix? You know, it's crazy because, you know, I, it's crazy to me that I get to call these people my colleagues now, that I know everyone that works on Hentified, that I know a lot of the cast members from Selena. So it's just like, and that they're Latinos. It's like, whoa, you know, to, to, to see that and to see it as an, as a as an actor myself and as an audience it means a lot um i haven't seen selena yet i have a friend of mine that's one of the leads eh, pero estoy super contenta you know for me to to see selena made again and to i don't know again i can't really comment on selena but on hentify a mí me encantó muchísimo i felt like it was very organic it was told by latino people like latino creators and I think they're doing a really good job on, on, on telling our stories and be as authentic as they can. And, yeah. and it's beautiful because we are part of, Latinos have so much power and I just want Latinos to know that we have so much power in general, that we can make money, that we can be the, our boss, you know, we can be the bosses and the CEOs of our, of our industries. And to see that, I think that is very needed. It's very needed for kids to see, oh, like I can be a lead one day. I can be a superstar one day. And I had that, you know, for me it was JLo. For me it was, you know, Gina Rodriguez. And so, and it's, so it's beautiful. I really, I, I love that Netflix is doing it. I think that Netflix is doing a really good job of not only with these shows, but also opening doors for all Latin America from Mexico, like from all these places and, and, and I, I hope that I can also produce my own content from home to the world. Hopefully that's, that's the next step. What, what, what is some of the things that you think this, this pandemic has, has taught, not only you, but maybe people in the industry, uh, as far as content producer, maybe not just actors, but like just content producers, like writers, producers, what, are, what do you think this is, has, you know, brought upon like? I think, um, well, one, I think because of the whole um, Black Lives Matter movement, starting from that and then seeing everything that's happening with, you know, globally with all these uh, social movements, I think one, that they have to be very aware and that people are in need of a change and that we want more brown and black and everything in between on screen. Um, and I think also the power that individuals have as content creators. I think that's, for me, it's been one of my biggest um, reflections in a way to realize that we can work from anywhere in the world. At first, you know, like you had to be in LA, you had to be in New York to create content, to be actors, to be, you know, producers. But now you can do it from home. There's hey, no where, excuse. Look where we at. <laughs> we're we're yes. at home. <laughs> exactly. And so it's just giving power to smaller to smaller people. Yeah. And by smaller I just mean like normal people that are not necessarily the CEOs of, of, you know, big companies, but now like the individuals have the opportunity to create a whole company yeah, and, yeah. and do it from your own location. And also what Netflix is doing, and I think that everyone else is following is opening doors for that, for filmmakers from different places to actually create content that can compete with Hollywood. So Hollywood is not really any more Hollywood. Hollywood is the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it, it, the, re the reason I asked that is because I had, I had watched somebody else's interview that I, I think I want to say was um, on Joe Rogan's podcast, I want to hear. Mm -hmm. sure. It's somebody had mentioned that it's no longer, Hollywood is no longer, like this had taught somebody that Hollywood is no longer kind of like the Mecca per se anymore. Like the pandemic has taught people like, 
you don't longer have to go to Hollywood to make it. You know? You so, don't. I, I'm even considering going to Puerto Rico. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm even considering, of course, I think that it, it is needed to have the connections if you want certain Absolutely. things. Like, I'm, I'm very grateful that I was able to be here and I've accomplished what I've accomplished, but now I really would love to be in between worlds. Absolutely. And, and create content for myself. And, and, and I think that we're ready for that. I don't think, I, I'm really against all the big corporations having all the control, yeah. that capitalistic mentality of yeah. like big corporations becoming billionaires. There's <laughs> no need for that. We can be all like, you know, we can all have money. We yeah. don't need, we don't need one person to be a billionaire, okay? <laughs> so, so I, yeah. I, I think that the world is big enough that everybody can, you know? Yes. I, you know, you know, just, just like this interaction we're having now, you know, this interview, you know, like, I think years ago, you know how it would normally go, you know? But yep. I think now it's, Every everybody can have it, you know. It's it's, it's that that as well too. But social media just opened everything up so much, you know. Like even YouTube, YouTube, you know, TikTok, Vine, Instagram, it's just opened up so much. And then we say that because you know, since we're on the topic of you can become you know big from anywhere. A perfect example is uh, an artist that we interviewed, you know, weeks back, actually months back, Ir Saiz. Ir Saiz is actually the guy with that dream girl, you know, dream dream girl. Huh? Yeah. Yo, like. He's from a small, teeny little island above Venezuela called Bonaire. And La Quinta Madre that I don't know where is out there, like, you know. And But, you know, even he told us, he's like, man, no one ever comes here for tourism. They just come here to die. Like, they're kids, like, little, little, just, you know, like, los viejitos llegan ahí, pasan su tiempito como un paraíso y se despiden. Tú me entiendes? Pero it's like, it's like that. But speaking about music, you know, so. Yes. Mm, you're a musician as well, we hear, you know. I play yes. as well. And that you're working on an album or what, what, what's going on when you release next? Well, um, so it's crazy. It's crazy because <laughs> like the pandemic. Like, oh, man. Like, <laughs> no, no, it's it's definitely like something that, you know, I've always, the, the chiquita siempre querido cantar. Like I always wanted that. And, you know, it, it felt like in the moment I have to focus on one and that I could only dream one thing. So, and my first love is always going to be acting. That's something that I felt like it was very God given type of talent. Um, and so I, I followed that because it was, it was what called me in the moment, but I would always write music and it wasn't until last year. Oh, this is calling. Um, get, so it wasn't until, sorry, I, I feel so bad. I mean, she, um, it wasn't, um, sorry about that. Um, she was worried that I wasn't with you guys right now. Um, so it wasn't until last year that I was like, Oh, I can do this for a living. Like I, out of nowhere, like I got all these songs and I started writing up like seven songs and I was like, Oh, okay, I might be cool. I might, I might be good at this. Like, let's try to, let's try to do this. And the pandemic was really what got me working more on it because I was always kind of working when I, I had just decided to do the music. Sneakerheads came up, Little America came up. So I, I didn't have the time to do it. And then the pandemic stopped everything in the acting world. And, and there, and, and, there, and then, then I was in Puerto Rico. I, I, kind of magically I got this producer involved and we've been making music and you know it it just kind of it was organic it, it just came out of, like it, it came out of nowhere and even one day in the studio we made like three songs in a day and we were like oh this is kind of like it felt like oh this is easy like I can do this like we can we can write like three to five songs in a day okay like and so <laughs> And so that's that's what we're doing now. Okay, rapeas, cansa. Don't give us a quick eight bars to something that's coming out. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> oh man, don't do that to me. I almost want. I was about to do that, but no, not yet. I can't. Um, eh, pues mira, la verdad es que es eh, lo que estoy encontrando ahora mismo. Me estoy encontrando como artista. Like I'm, I'm trying to see my niche or what what really I want to to send out to the world, but it's like reggaeton and fusion of that fusion of reggaeton pop and baladas 
So I want to do a little bit of that fusion. And, and I, I'm very nostalgic. I love salsa and everything. And I love what Bad Bunny is doing with music, that he's not really putting himself in a box, but he's just trying everything. And I think that we are in this, in this uh, kind of moment in time where music is just all over the place, kind of. Como que hay un ritmo, pero tienen muchas fusiones de otras cosas. And yeah. so I'm, I'm doing that. And I'm kind of like doing a little bit of, of all of that. ¿Qué están tus playlists ahorita? ¿Qué es lo que tú estás escuchando ahorita? Pues mira, eh, Rosalía me encanta. Mm. Ben me encanta Bad Bunny. Eh, me encanta Karol G. Eh, me gusta Becky G. So esas son las como que mis inspiraciones. Me encanta Jesse Reyes. Me encanta Billie Eilish. Sí, Jesse Reyes. Oh, she's amazing. She's amazing. So I wanna, I, I'm, I'm exploring all of that. Um, me gusta mucho lo que hace Billie Eilish. Siento que mi música de alguna manera, pues, because I'm writing it, it has a lot of emotion and it has a lot of what I feel in the moment. So I wanna try to be as authentic as I can with that. Pero I'm open to also do commercial music and, and see what it goes. Y me, lo, que me, lo que quiero es hacerle la vida, quiero, quiero que la gente se sienta bien, you know, and, and yeah. inspire people and, and be vulnerable too. That's what I like about music, that through music, you can be as honest as you can. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good. Vamos a hacer una comparación, okay, a little comparison here, right? So, yo ah. eres corchado. Si tú fueras un sazón, y los artistas del mundo fueran tu sazón para hacer tu sazón, tus pimientas, what would it be to create your sazón? What would you be? Pero estamos hablando de comida o de esto. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about pretty much like, like, like talentos and like talento. actors, singers, whoever. A little bit of this, a little bit of that equals Jernes Corchado. Ok, perfecto, perfecto. Me encanta la pregunta. Porque sí, tengo, yo creo que yo sería una combinación de Shakira. Eh, Shakira por la, por la forma que, que escribe su música. Yo soy bien... Me gusta mucho eh, la metáfora y la filosofía. So I love bringing that. Eh, me gusta mucho eh, Shakira. Me gusta mucho. Ooh, now I have so many ideas, like so many people in my head. Um, Shakira meets Jesse Reyes meets Bad Bunny meets Residente from Calle 13. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The rat, the radicalism, man. Yeah. Yes, because I do like even in my music, I have a little bit of rap. Hago mucho rap en español y escribo y tengo. So y lo estoy haciendo mucho más ahora que me estoy permitiendo hacer el rap. Y muchas de las cosas que quiero hacer es pues bring people together and kind of like have some of my songs are a little bit of of that criticism, like social criticism. So quiero tener un poquito de todo. Nice, we'll nice. see, we'll see, we'll see. I don't know. Like, I hope that people <laughs> like it. <laughs> I, I look forward to that. Like, I, I can definitely see it though. Like, I could, I yeah. can feel it. feel it. You know what? And honestly, también otra cosa de que lo más que encuentro o lo más que quiero llevar a la gente es que el universo es mágico. Absolutely. That, that like, you know, magic exists. And, and to, and also, one thing that I can say is that my tagline is, this is the journey. Yes. Este es el journey. Así que la gente va a poder como seguir el journey conmigo. Nice. Ooh, nice. Well, we hope, yeah. to, we hope to you know, go with you on your journey, be part of your great journey you got going on right now, because uh, you're doing a lot, young lady. You're doing a whole lot for our culture, for our, <laughs> you know, for nuestra gente, eh, representando a nosotros de, like, not just... We were mentioning this earlier. You, you're not, you know, the the roles nowadays are not no longer, you know, the gardener, the babysitter, you know, the nanny, the the, the housemaid. It's, it's no longer like that. And for you to be up there playing these roles, you know, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really hope that we can keep changing the industry, that we keep uh, becoming the producers and the creators of our own stories. And and yeah, that's that's what we're doing. That's the plan, you know? Becoming the boss now. Uh, <laughs> Muchas gracias, de verdad, que ha sido un placer conocer a ustedes. No. <laughs>
Uh, thank, thank you for, for coming on and, and telling us your story. And, and we hope to, that you can come back, you know, later down the road and we can check on, on the growth, you know? Yes, I can, I can show you my music finally when it's ready and we can talk that's about it for sure. I would love that. You definitely got to send us, you know, just get like a private listening, you know, and check it out. Hold I know, up. I know. It's going to happen. I'll tell you. You have to follow me on Instagram. DM me. Let's get connected and I'll send you everything. Absolutely. Sounds good. We'll definitely keep it. Un placer. Cuídense mucho. Igualmente. Right. Como te right. right. um, en todas las redes sociales, how can they follow you? Okay, so on Instagram, it would be at Jernest Corchado. On Twitter, it's Jernest C-O. And on Facebook, it's Jernest. It's okay, okay. Nice. Yeah. And, and anything yeah. else you want to plug in? Like any... And yeah, then, absolutely. You can find me on Sneakerheads as Nori, the coolest girl you'll ever meet. Uh, and you can also find me on Apple TV uh, uh, in the second episode, The Jaguar. And you can also watch me on Kukui the Boogeyman as Sofia Martin on Sci-Fi, as Ana Gracia Duerte on The Blacklist. And yeah, and a bunch of other little things. So you can just IMDb me. <laughs> Make sure you check out. And Take it Dude, away, folks. <laughs> Go ahead, subscribe, comment below. You guys got some questions for this beautiful young lady, Jernes Portado. Man, thank you so much for your time. And as well, too, te deseamos lo mejor. Besos para ti. Igualmente. Un beso y feliz Navidad. Hey. Hopefully we get it out by then. You hear that? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. We out. <laughs>